Hey guys, I'm here. Welcome back for episode four of season two of Invincible. This is the mid-season finale for this season as it is going on hiatus until sometime next year. Now, I don't know exactly when it's coming back. I'm not sure if that has been stated. If it has been, I haven't come across that myself. If you guys know anything about that, please share in the comments below because I would love to have an idea of when we can uh, expect to see this story conclude. But I'm excited to get into this week's episode because we got a little bit of a family reunion for Thanksgiving that I wasn't prepared for. I, it was inevitable eventually, right? But I didn't expect it so soon. So I'm ready to get into this, guys. So let's go ahead and jump right into the episode. Remember, if you want to see the full length reaction, check it out over on Patreon or if you got a memorable channel, get you access as well. It is a watch along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up with the time codes of reaction the entire episode. Over there, you get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover on the channel. You also get to suggest and vote on what movies to react to each month. We got monthly Q and A's, behind scenes footage, to try to make it worth your while since you're going to be support the channel. But at the end of the day, I'd really appreciate it. if you guys enjoy this reaction. At least leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already, because it really does go a long way with helping these videos is out. And with that all said and out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into episode four. Here we go. Hello, son. It's been a while. <sighs> oh, 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 are we going to get his perspective? Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. How long has he been out? Well, it's been a year, right? Well, in present day, it's been a year. Whoa. That's wicked. Oh, was he going to give himself to it? Oh, interesting. Oh, his hero instinct kind of kicked in. Wow. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, he looks pretty damn good like this. I don't know who you are, but we owe you our lives. Won't you stay? Tell us your name. Oh, where you come from. What did he say? I'm very curious what, what he said. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, Nolan was ready. He thought he was going to attack him. Oh, I missed you. <laughs> the Thraxians told me that they needed my help. They do need your help. It's complicated. Come with me and... Now, why would you lie to me again? Mm, he didn't think you'd come if you it came from him, man. I need your help. I can't believe you put them up to this. Made them lie to me, too. Just listen. I don't have to listen to anything you say. Look, I made a mistake. A mistake. Mistake. Son. No, you don't get to call me that anymore. What do you want me to say, Mark? You could have started with "I'm sorry." You know what? Don't bother. All right, it wouldn't mean anything anyway. I hope you like it here with your new friends. I guess they don't know you the way that I do. Fuck you. Ah. Uh, uh, <sighs> His people do need your help. Let me tell you why. I don't care. I know that's not true. Five minutes for them, not you. Mm. Oh, <laughs> what? Mark, welcome to our home. My husband's told me so much about you. Andressa. Wow. Seems like I wasn't too far off. Super glad you got to show me how great your life is without us. That's not what I wanted to show you. Mark. Oh. Who's that? Whoa. This is your little brother. Thanos. <laughs> nice. Uh.
Oh, oh, Debbie. God damn it, man. Why me? You could have taken Earth whenever you wanted. Why did you marry me? Mm. Everything we built. 20 years, and none of it was real. Only Mark, and you almost took him too. God damn, man. I never even fucking knew you. Why me? So sad, man. Hey, at least I'm, this time you know which is which. Not this time. Yeah. No, 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 I was there. I remember the machine. Ha 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 ha! Oh, wow. My experiences. Because... You are the clone. The clone. Debbie, it's, uh, it's Donald. Why did you look at me weird that one day? Huh? What was up with that? Could you elaborate? I'd really like some answers. Yeah, hmm, interesting, huh? Yeah. Need some answers. Oh, come the fuck on. We'll see where that goes. I, I don't, I don't even know what to say. A new wife, a kid. You just replaced us. Except, you know, bugs. That's not <laughs> true. I was going through hell back on Earth, and you were getting on with a grasshopper two seconds after you left. It wasn't Ooh. like that. He's way older than six months, which means you are... Thraxon biology is different than ours. I didn't I mean, replace you, Mark. Could be right about that. We're only allowed to procreate with genetically similar species. Humans, for example. Oh... By now, Viltrum knows I've left my post. They'll track me, and they'll find this planet. When they do, they'll see your brother as inferior and kill him. And I can't stop them alone. <sighs> oh. We can't stop them together. You almost oh. killed me, then lied to me to get me here. He's your brother, Mark. You don't get to put that on me. Not after everything you did. What I did on Earth was... Unforgivable, but your brother and all these people will die without our help. You're the reason they're in danger. You signed their death warrant, not me. And now I'm asking you to help me save them. Damn. Fuck you. They're good people. How? How can I help? I couldn't even beat you. We can start training. Oh, wow. We're gonna need a montage. Oh no, it might not be. That? It might be too late. Oh no, because of Alan. Oh, f no. fuck! No! Mark, get Andressa and your brother to safety. Where? Andressa will show you. Go. There's no time. Dude, we have no idea how he stacks up against other Viltrumites too, because he's been our only frame of reference, really. Oh, she back at, I forget their team name, the old uh, stomping grounds before the rest of them became guardians. This guy again. It's been a long week. So put robots thing back and I won't beat the living shit out of you. You want this back? Come and get it. Oh, whoa. Wrong choice, asshole. Mmm, taking out that frustration with her dad on him. Also, her anger at herself. He never told me what his name is. We allow children to choose their own name once they come of age. Thraxen lifespans aren't like humans. Only one of your years. Oh. It seems your father's genes have slowed our son's aging. Oh, damn. So he's going to... She won't see us any of it. Really? Your father saved my life and the lives of many others. I fell in love with him before I knew his story. By the time I found out about you and your mother, I was, I was already... Mm. What's the human phrase? Pregnant. Head over feet? Oh, Heels. that too. Nolan loves and misses you. Even if he can't say it to you, he said it to me. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, great. 
Oh shit. Okay, here it goes, man. Yeah, but Mark's not ready, but he can help everybody else while Nolan takes on the the main forces. God damn. Are you okay? We're fine. Mark sheltered us. Good. Oh. Good. Andressa, go deeper into the caves. Mark, come with me. There's two more. <laughs> um, I think she's being a little unnecessarily rough with him. Wow, man, she's being very reckless. Oh, no. Oh. Nice. She lost her head, man. I need help here. Check for breathing and pulse. Are they okay? Please, please just help them. Mm, I don't think that was looking too good. Fortunately, all that does too is prove her father's point a little bit more. No. Mm -hmm. Debbie, are you home? Can I come in? Oh. Heart. Yeah. You okay? I'm fine. I just. thought you were the strong one to handle your no. life the way you did. No one has superpowers. He's indestructible. That's not strength. That's having it easy. You, you've got strength. Living with Nolan, standing up to him, raising Mark the way you did. No. Well, he and Bill, we're all still alive and not slaves. You said it yourself. Nolan was always off fighting something and you made things work without him. Now, it's just official. You don't need the bum. No. You never did. Damn. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh oh. Why does he have Cecil's password? That's how he found out. That sucks. Damn, so much destruction already. Oh. Oh my god. Dad? Oh. Why do I care about them? They were weak. Short-lived, barely a species. They shouldn't matter to me. That doesn't mean they should die. You don't understand. I'm not supposed to feel this way. Oh. How is this better? This is how you should have felt on Earth. Oh. There's the great Nolan. Yeah, he just can't compute what these emotions mean to him. They fostered on Earth and blossomed here. I'll kill you for what you did to these people. Then do it. Mm. Because 
is your Nolan's son. I'll make this quick. Damn. God. Whoa. Oh shit! I just noticed it's got a blade on it too. He's fighting two two v one right now. If your son dies, he never deserved to live. Hawking won't keep you alive, Fyor. Mm. Nice. Mark, what are you doing? She's tearing you apart. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me right now? Stop holding back or you're gonna get us both killed. I'm not holding back. Yes, you are. She's trying to kill you, Mark. If you're not trying to kill her, oh. you're going to die. Don't think. Act. You need to fight like a Viltramite. No. Yeah, no. Nope. If you don't do this, we're all dead. Remember what I told you. He's got to unlock that next level, tap into that Saiyan strength. God damn, man. Yeah, here it comes. Ooh, got one, got one, got another. God damn. When you got something to fight for, someone to fight for, that gives you a boost, man. Get her! <laughs> Get fucked. Ooh! God, this is brutal! Oh! Whoa! 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 Oh, he, he couldn't deliver it. He hesitated. I'd say you fought well, but... It's okay. Nolan got his. He'll get yours. Do you regret attacking my family now? Do you, Dad? Ooh! So close. Oh! Whoa! Oh my god! Whoa! Holy shit! Mark. Are you okay? No. Don't worry. It's over. Well, for now. Have a look. Oh! How is this motherfucker alive? He's literally holding his intestines! Are you not? It's done. Wow, just enough to deliver a what seemed to be like a backbreaker. I don't want Nolan's book money. Your money any longer. Oh. The survivors in Chicago mm. need more than I do, but you don't get something for nothing in this world. And you especially don't get something for nothing from you. Debbie? It's mm, a good point. We take it. We feel we owe you. And I'm done feeling that way. If you change your mind... I won't. I'm proud of Debbie, man. Art really came in swinging for her, man. Wow, he's really getting out of here alive. Oh, no. Dad. Mark. Don't forget the good I did. My work. My deeds. My books. Oh. Read my books, Mark. But what are they gonna do with Mark? There's no way they just leave Mark behind. The man with the invincible gun. Oh yeah, she's well past time they were supposed to meet. Yeah, I'm wondering, is he a clone or a, like a android? Oh, he's 
There's blood. Thank God. Oh. Oh. He could be an advanced one of uh, what's his nuts is uh, robotics. Robots. I don't know why I said it like that. Good. You're alive. <sighs> My dad. What are you doing? Don't speak. Listen. Clancy. My name is General Creed. You've survived your first true battle and proven yourself worthy of your Viltramite heritage. Oh. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> your father will be executed, and you will return to Earth. You will assume his mission and prepare the planet for our rule. I know this may not appeal to you, so I'll put it like this. You can kill a few humans to convince them to capitulate, or we will kill many if we arrive to find you or your planet still defiant against us. God damn it, we man. We check on your progress soon. And unlike your father, we do not change our minds. Sloppy welding. Obviously the work of a clone. <laughs> but it'll do. Yes, King Mauler. <laughs> wow. Why I didn't think of this sooner. Why stop at one idiot clone when I could have so many more? Wow, now that he knows he's confident of making more, I guess. Oh, one of you is better in the kitchen. No wonder your burgundy on is terrible. You can't even make decent lemonade. Oh, he poison your ass. My burgundy on is exquisite, you jackass. And so is my lemonade. <laughs> when it's not laced with a modified Michael yep. Johnson, that is. <laughs> Sometimes things are the way they are for a good fucking reason. Fair enough. All right, man. God, dude. Wow. Yeah, I can see where that's a like a, that's a adequate stopping point for the season to take a break on that big old bombshell we just got left with. That was an insane episode. Insane fight. Dude, and people said, called me out, like, last season, said I was stupid for this, thinking, like, any emotional or mental element had anything to do with their powers, when we saw evidence of it all throughout it. Every time Mark got angry, every time Mark went a little rabid, he got stronger. And, you know, every time, you know, it's linked to emotion in a lot of ways in very different aspects. So like when he saw all those bodies driven there and decapitated, mangled and all that kind of stuff, when he was getting his ass whooped, that made him focus. Whether it's through rage, anger, or just a sheer drive to protect something, it allowed him to overcome. A survival instinct kicked in. It's just how this shit works, man. And we saw, we saw all that, man. And we saw more of it here. And I love that. You know, when he's just, it still just wasn't enough. He didn't like go full on murder mode like Nolan wanted him to. He was still in control. He was still Mark at the end of the day. And, you know, it that hesitation to deliver the final blow, it gave him enough to win the battle. He would have solidified that win if he followed through lethally, but he hesitated. That side of him, he still just can't kill. It's not who he is. You know, that got him gutted and Nolan had to come and save face for him and they they did it. They did it. I mean, they took him on. Somehow, what's his face? Was able to cup his intestines in enough to get out of that cave, chase Nolan down and give him a good old swift kick to the back to cripple him. At least for now. I was imagining he'll probably heal from it and recover from it. They'll probably try to execute him well before that happens. Yeah, man, that sucks. That was a good fight, though. The way that Nolan was... He's still confused. Like, he 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 did grow. We saw it. We saw it every step of the way. And he just buried it because he didn't know how to reconcile it with his Viltramite programming, with his existence, with his purpose. He delayed his takeover. He delayed his their entire plans. You know, he uh, he did all these things. You know, we saw it in the simple moments in him being proud for his son and his baseball game, for his writing, for things he legitimately did do for Debbie. But when the time came, he buried that. He tried to swallow it. He tried to pretend that those didn't matter because he just can't understand why they matter to him. He wasn't raised to understand these feelings, but he clearly has them 
And that's one of the reasons he left. You know, he feels some sense of remorse, but he doesn't know why. And he just doesn't make logical sense to him in the way that they were raised in this survivalist culture. Like he was raised to believe that your strength is what warrants your existence like anything beneath them anything that can't match them in strength durability longevity intelligence all these things isn't worth anything that's kind of how they're they're portrayed they go out they conquer a place and they try to lift it up under their banner and to kind of exert their superiority and share the wealth in a, in a certain sort of way. You know, when he found himself caring for these seemingly insignificant moments, finding this emotional attachment to his wife, to his son, and he just couldn't reconcile with that. And then when it came to face the music, put his cards all on the table, he, he swallowed all of that to try to honor that purpose. And then when it came to exacting or delivering the killing blow to his son, he couldn't do it. So he ran. He fled. He already burned that bridge. He couldn't go back to Viltrum. He couldn't go. He couldn't stay on Earth after what he had done. He became a man of nowhere. And then he found some solace here with these people where that instinct that he developed and honed on Earth kicked in when he was about to snuff himself out, throw himself into a black hole. He saw those people in danger and an instinct kicked in and he saved them. And that's something he learned from Mark. That's something he learned on Earth. And he couldn't reconcile that again. And when he met these people, these, they're frail, helpless. You know, they live such a short, so much shorter than even a human lifespan. And he just wanted to keep them safe. Like that instinct kicked in. That fatherly, protective instinct kicked in. And he, again, wrestled with understanding why. And this, you know, this, this woman that he met there, you no, know, was able to sense these things, pick up on them because they, like they are quick about everything because their lives are so much shorter. You know, he was able to kind of get some sense of therapy here, but he's still wrestling with the why. He accepts that he has these feelings now, but it still frustrates him when stuff like this gets out of his control. Why he has them in the first place? Because he started crying like he was distraught with the loss of life around him, unlike when he was on Earth because he was still trying to keep those feelings at a distance. And here, you know, he's kind of accepted that he feels these things, but it frustrates him so much that he feels them because it, it comes off in this way that he feels that it's he's weak in that moment because he failed to protect them. He failed to be strong for them. He And then the fact that they even need this protection to begin with, why, why does he even feel this way? Why do they even deserve to live? If they're so weak, you know, he's trying to process all of this. And he had that little outburst with Mark. I like seeing that. He's very complex as much as he tried to put up a front. And that, again, it does not excuse anything he did because he so actively chose to do the things that he did. And he understands that. He knows he can't go back. He knows he can't be forgiven, but he's trying to do what he can for the best of the people around him or people back on Earth because he's like, hey, I need you to be here because you need to know the kind of the gravity of the situation because now they kind of have their noses on our scent. They're going to be coming here. And if I have any chance of saving them off, I'm going to need your help because if they follow the tra he trail here, they'll follow it right back to Earth. I mean, hell, fucking uh, Alan already gave that away because they have a mole in the coalition of planets so that... That's already a big old loss right there for them and a big old vulnerability. It's just, it's wild how this is all like unraveling. But Nolan actually, now that he's kind of in a place where he's accepted this side of himself, he's trying to do better here. I don't know. It's really interesting. And it was very, very hard for Mark to process that, understandably, especially given the devastation that Nolan left in, when they, in their fight and his struggle and the fact that he almost killed him himself. It was it got desperately out of hand. And to be in this situation where his father tricked him to come out there, to be offered this ultimatum, this information, this, this offer, this plea to do what he failed to do on Earth, it's crazy. To him and like it, it was interesting too though that little lonely moment that he had with i mean essentially his stepmom you know when she was talking about the nolan as she met him and he was broken devastated distraught destroyed by the things that happened on earth and the things that they he did to them like he feels remorse again maybe he can't compute it all but he he's processing that he's working through it here it's interesting to see that he's at least tried and he didn't seek this he didn't come here he didn't impose himself upon these people 
He saved them and he was asked to stay. So it's not like Mark thought too that he was here to do what he was going to do on Earth. It's not that situation. But regardless, the fact that he fled his post is going to be a consequence that falls upon both of them regardless. And I love this episode for, again, I love this season so far for shining this light on Debbie. And the show's always really had a good focus on her, but her being able to kind of like find her strength and her and her purpose in just being that foundation behind what makes Mark who he is. You know, she puts, she's not put enough credit on to her contributions to his life, what she brings to the table, her own strength. Art put it beautifully. Nolan's invincible. He's bulletproof. He's all these things. He's got super strength. He can fly. He's, the world's just easy to him because he doesn't have to worry about anything. You have all these things to worry about, to care about, to fear for, and you pushed through. You confronted him in your frailness, your weakness physically. Like he could have just, and she'd die, but she stood up to him and she gave him everything she was feeling without fear. That's strength. And she's passed that on to Mark. And I like that. I also like speaking of that, Mark's anger that he's bubbling up with this whole interaction when he approached his father, he still had that longing to hug him, but Lola was so ready for him to throw hands because he was like, Hur! but Mark wrapped around him instead. It was just like, he couldn't help that, that he couldn't resist that part of himself that still sees in front of him, the man that raised him. He still sees that even though he's still wrestling with all these fucking feelings. It's so beautifully done. And throughout the episode, we have Donald stumbling upon what happened to his original self. But I think he might be a refined version of whatever that, uh, I forget that guy, the guy from they kidnapped from the campus who was turning people into human soldier, robot, cyborg things. And this is a re re uh, like a refined progression of that, where he's got, a, he appears fully fine, even bleeds, but he's like armored beneath it. I mean, cause that night he dented that knife when he stabbed himself, found his glasses, found the file of him being killed. I'm wondering where that's gonna go. And also coming back to Debbie, I like that she's finally cutting herself off from Cecil after that, that meeting. She's just like, hey, we can't be relying on everybody at this point. That money should be going to the people that got hurt in that mess. And we'll, we'll make our own ends meet. That whole incident with Eve has sent her spiraling after how she that confrontation landed with her parents, after what happened with the that that park that fell through, like it's really messed up her idea of what she has been doing up until this point. To the point where she's redirecting that frustration and that anger into this one guy she caught breaking into the hideout, and then she got reckless. She got in her head. She wasn't being efficient. She wasn't being smart. She was just letting her emotions take complete control, and she got. I mean, I would presume, I don't know if it followed up on it. I presume she, there was, that couple died. Everybody's dealing with something right now, man, except Will and freaking uh, Amber are just kind of like trying to be just smile and wave as everybody's lives are moving on and dancing around them, trying to be as supportive to everybody as they as they can be, but nobody's willing to really kind of give them a chance at the moment. This is a great episode, though. Fight's beautiful. The like literal, like it was bubbling and oozing with emotions. Like it just ran the gamut throughout this and brutal dude, Nolan just going full ham on, on those Viltramites though, because he had to step in and protect Mark again, kind of playing upon the weaknesses that come with saving people as he's now slowly learning. It is like he says, a little bit of a hindrance, but I mean, he can't help it. It's nice to see that. And then he and he's being carted away for his execution. His last words to Mark was like, remember who I was. Remember my books. Read my books. There's truth in there and stuff like that. And like it's like he wants him to know what he wanted to be, I think is what at the end of the, end of the day. I think he felt doomed to fulfill that purpose. But he found something that he wanted, but maybe didn't feel like he could keep it or have it. Maybe he thought it was a dream that it wasn't something he could actually hold on to because if he didn't do what he did, the Viltramite Empire was just going to show up and wreck the place anyway. I don't know. I'm I'm just very curious and intrigued and fascinated by Nolan's psychological breakdown. And now, because he somewhat proved himself in combat, which is the way that they see value in Viltramites, Mark has kind of earned his place in their eyes to take Nolan's place as the arbiter for Earth. Either he goes back fulfills Nolan's goal there himself on their behalf, or they will come and do much, much worse themselves. So great. But unbeknownst to them, Mark did, well, I mean, I assume 
what's his face that should have been dead in that cave came out of there. I don't know if he killed the wife and the kid before he left, but presumably we, we can assume, I think, that Mark's half-brother still exists. So if they don't know that, there's another half Viltrumite out there that might be able to back him up. I don't know. We, we, we're going to need some help. Mark did fine once he called upon some of that that primal strength, but he still wasn't enough to, I mean, really, honestly, even come out of that fight all on top, all because of his inability to finish the job, so to speak. So we'll see how that goes when an army, more than one, anything like that, anything beyond this one-on-one -on -one fight that he had, it's going to be tough. We're going to have to call upon the entirety of Earth or maybe other Mercs from we still haven't followed up on that at all. We have not seen shit from Angstrom or any of this multiverse stuff at all yet. What the hell? But guys, that's about all I got to say for right now. So I'm just kind of I can't think of anything else to uh, want to talk about or cover. So I'll just go ahead and pass it off to you guys. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about where we're at right now with all the characters? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If it did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already. Remember, if you want to see the full length reaction, check it out over on Patreon or if you've got Meryl channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends. Manny Share, Ryan Karen, Yorick Horscom, Lita, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hell, Jake and Trail, Eric Official, Amy Becca, Casey Wood, and Scythe. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support. But guys, that's it for now. Hopefully, I'll see you guys in another video or at least when we return for more Invincible. But until then, take care, everybody.